the family, uh, not only of the officer who was uh, killed in the car, but as you know, there was also an officer who committed suicide. So I, what I will do is we'll get into the specifics of the information that we can share with you. And we'll start off with uh, Director Howard, and then he will turn it over to Chief Williams, and then we will field your questions uh, as was instructed as to how to answer them or ask them to us, okay? Thank you, Mayor. Citizens of Cleveland, yesterday at approximately 10 p.m., an officer was shot and killed in the line of duty in the area of West 65th and Store. The officer's name was Detective James Skernovitz. He was assigned to our gang impact unit and most recently sworn in as a violent crimes task force Operation Legend Task Officer with the FBI. He became a police officer in February of 1998 and served the division well for over 22 years, dedicating his life to the citizens of Cleveland and making our city a safer place. Members of the Cleveland Division of Police Homicide Unit have identified and taken into custody three persons of interest who were arrested on unrelated charges two juveniles and one adult. This investigation remains in its early stages and additional information may be released as it becomes available. We are asking that anyone with knowledge of yesterday's killing of Detective James Skernovitz call the FBI tip line at 216-622-6842. That's the FBI tip line at 216-622-6842. In addition, in addition to the senseless shooting death of Detective Skernovitz, we lost Officer Nicholas Sabo uh, to suicide. I want to remind anyone out there that, that there is suicide help out there. If you're going through a crisis, there is help for you. And I urge you to call the Cuyahoga County Suicide Prevention Hotline at 216-623. 6888. That's the Cuyahoga County Suicide Prevention Hotline at 216-623-6888. You can also text the number 4HOPE, 4HOPE to 741741. You can call 911 or you can visit the emergency room, uh, emergency department of any hospital uh, nearest to you. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Chief, uh, Cleveland Police Chief Calvin Williams. Thanks, Director. Um, I don't think anybody out there can um, really understand what the division is going through. Uh, the loss of an officer in the line of duty, especially to violence, uh, is a terrible tragedy. Um, but two officers in one night is really bad. You know, Jimmy was a great police officer. He was a um, what we call a policeman's policeman. He worked hard for the city that he loved. He worked hard to take care of his family, and he worked hard to take care of his fellow officers. Uh, Skur, as a, a lot of folks out there called him, uh, again, he was the one that you know we want to duplicate over and over again uh, because he did the work the way it should have been done. Uh, Nick uh, came to us uh, later on in life from. Uh, outside of Cuyahoga County, uh, actually uh, down near Columbus as a lateral transfer to his division. He's a person that wanted to work uh, in the city of Cleveland, and we appreciate that. And uh, Nick took his life, and you know we're saddened by that. Uh, we're trying to get to the bottom of why, and as the director stated, any officer out there that needs help, they need to give us a call. Uh, that number for the county suicide prevention hotline as well as our employee assistants uh, with Sergeant uh, Melissa Dawson and her folks. They do an excellent job. Just reach out to them or, or call one of your buddies on the shift uh, so that we can make sure that you get the, the help and the attention you need. Uh, for the residents and the people out there, keep sending us your prayers. We appreciate it. Thank you.
uh, we're open for questions. Matt Ray, what was Detective Cernovitz doing at that location and what was the role of the other man in this car? Chief, if you could repeat the question. Uh, there's a question from a reporter about um, uh, the duties of uh, Detective Cernovitz that night and the person that was with him. Uh, again, we're um, still deep into this investigation. There's a lot more work to be done. Uh, we're still asking for people with information to give that information. Uh, we're not going to get into the details of uh, what his assignment was at night, but he was doing his duty to protect the citizens of the city, and uh, we'll leave it at that. From Adam Paris, any idea of what happened leading up to the detective, the detective shooting at this point? Uh, again, what led up together. Uh, as the director stated, there are three folks, uh, persons of interest that are arrested on unrelated warrants right now. Uh, we think there is a connection to those three and maybe others. So we're asking for the public's help. Uh, we've gotten a lot of tips in on uh, people possibly involved in this. So we want those tips to keep coming in. Uh, we have uh, dozens and dozens of detectives and agents from uh, our federal and state partners uh, folks out there uh, ready to take those tips and run with them to see uh, where they lead. But uh, right now, we're not going to get into the details of his assignment that night. Uh, once we wrap this up and have the persons definitely responsible in custody, then we'll do a more thorough briefing with the details of what actually happened that night. Got a question now from Nick Castell of UCPN. Have we established any motives to this change? And again, uh, you know, we don't know of a motive to this. It could have been random. It could have been targeted. We don't know. Uh, we're still investigating this. Uh, the three persons arrested, you know, we're talking to some of those people, but there's a process for that also. So to put all the pieces of the puzzle together, uh, there are folks out there that probably have more information, uh, even a small bit of information that they may not think is relevant. We need that uh, to put this puzzle together and to make sure that um, we bring the people responsible to this to justice and we give uh, and that we give Jimmy's family uh, some peace uh, in this process. One more question from Adam Therese. Did um, Bebo and Skirnovitz know one another? There's some, some people saying that they were partners at some point. Yeah, as far as the relationship between the two officers uh, that um, are no longer with us, uh, no real details. Of course, they knew each other. Most of our officers know each other, but uh, whether or not they work together, uh, we'll get that information later on. Thank you. We have a few questions still coming in. Um, the next question is okay. Can you confirm that Scott Dingus was an informant? Again, we're not going to uh, um, talk about things like that. We want to have our detectives give them a chance to fully investigate this to make sure that all the pieces of the puzzle are put together uh, before we um, kind of tell what people did and didn't do. So we really would appreciate the, that the narrative of things like that don't really take hold out there with our media partners. Uh, we'll get you the proper, the correct, the factual information once we develop it and once we vet it in this case, we'll get that out to you. One more, Tiffany from WKYC. I started watching late and may have missed it. Does Detective Skirnovich leave behind a wife, children, adult children? Yeah, Jimmy had a wife and uh, um, two adult children. Uh, he has uh, sisters, uh, uncles, aunts, uh, a mom. Uh, you know, the same thing with uh, with Nick, uh, he, he has a wife and, and children. Uh, again, uh, pray for these officers, pray for their families, uh, and pray for all the men and women of the Cleveland Division of Police. Thank you. I'm sorry, one more. You know, uh, one thing that I neglected to do is uh, uh, thank a lot of our partners that came in to help with this. 
uh, an integral partner that's always out there with us, of course, is uh, Marshall Elliott with the U.S. Marshal Service, Pete Elliott, and of course, our FBI partners were instrumental in helping us with a lot of the details of this case. And I want to thank uh, Special Agent in charge, Eric Smith from the FBI and his folks that came out, as well as the U.S. Marshal Service and, and our other partners from the state and the county that assisted on this. Thank you. There's one for Melissa Reed at Foxy. Chief, I'm so sorry for your loss. Can you tell us more about the informant, the other person shot and killed, and what he was doing in the park? I think we answered that already there. Uh, uh, the chief's response is about uh, giving more details about the officer, why they were there. He says he already responded and will give very specific uh, details once things have been wrapped up. Any more questions? Well, we thank you for your um, uh, participation. And again, as the chief mentioned, as soon as we're able, we will share additional information as the case is developed. Once it's fully developed, then the chief will give uh, all the specifics that he can give at that time. Thank you.